This information is as old as history, but how did it enter the mainstream? Part of the blame goes to a certain Mr. Gutenberg. Before the printing press, there were only a few books available. Gutenberg changed all that. Thanks to his invention, more people could access information and disseminate their knowledge or the product of their imagination. Becoming a reader or an author became a thing. Because of the complex and expensive process of printing, the quantity of books published then was not even close to what we have now. In today's information age, it has become impossible to keep track of the number of books, reports and articles published. And most of these have stopped existing in pages. They are bits, they are digital. The almost infinite supply of information on the web makes us wiser, but at the same time it makes us an easy target for disinformation campaigns. When we have a lot of sources to pick from, how can we know which one to choose? Are we able to adapt to technology? It advances at an exponential rate. We humans, on the other hand, need some time to process the changes it brings. So the answer is yes, we do adapt, but once we've done so, we need to start all over again. So far, the 21st century has been marked by the rush towards constant adaptation and optimization for technological change. That gives us anxiety. Are we infoxicated? Citing one of the pioneers of computer science, Luigi Dada, we are the product of the impact of the internet on our lives. We search for something in Google, we have an opinion about it, and we tweet that opinion out to the world. We generate, we collect, we transmit, we disseminate information in ways we don't have much in common with those of our ancestors. The unmanageable amount of information confuses us. There are about 750 million websites, more than 2.5 billion active users on Facebook, and well above 1 billion on Twitter. Every minute, every 60 seconds, people send around 42 million messages on WhatsApp and Messenger. We simply cannot keep up with the gigantic amount of information. Our brains are not designed to deal with it. In fact, they are more or less the same as the brains of the Cro-Magnons, who lived around 40,000 years ago. And as if we weren't confused enough already, add distraction to the mix. Psychologists Susan K. Perry and Jordan Miller have found that we can only fully focus on one thing at a time and retain a maximum of seven items in our short-term memory. We are intoxicated, intoxicated by the amount of information around us that we can't process and that complicates our decision-making progress. Of course, we knew all this. Confusion and distraction have characterized the early 21st century. What we didn't realize was that our infoxication could become the psychological foundation enabling disinformation campaigns to succeed. We started hearing about fake news in 2016 after the election of Donald Trump. Ever since, the US president has used this term to rant online against mainstream media. Here in Europe, disinformation has been identified as one of the instruments that geopolitical rivals used to interfere with each other's domestic affairs. Now we know how we got here. But what exactly is disinformation? Please join us for our next episode to find out. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell button to stay up to date. Hasta pronto.